Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got a new early edition uh, kit to share with you guys today. You may have seen the review uh, probably a couple days ago now of uh, the new M4A3 E8 Easy 8 Sherman from Tamiya. And the box art might look familiar because it's the same box art that they did for the 35th scale kit, but now they've shrunken it down and made a 148 uh, scale. And that might be the reason why the box is already available. It's because they're basically we're just taking the same image off of the uh, the other kit. So this is all complete brand new kit from Tamiya. It'll be due out from what I understand in July in the United States. So in other parts of the world you might get it a little bit earlier or a little later just depending on what it is. But uh, 48 scale is really starting to make a, a big resurgence at least with my sales. I notice more and more guys are using these for gaming pieces as well as dioramas because they fit perfectly with the 48 scale airplanes and there's figures and all kinds of other stuff out and to me it seems to be the main company making them in 48th right now as new kits I know there's there's old kits from the past from like Bandai and some other ones that were making in 48th but as 48th goes right now to me is it as well as every once in a while we also get a, a, a Italeri kit too so I was looking inside there are four sprues so it looks like it's a great kit for for anyone from a beginner all the way up to a a seasoned modeler that wants to have a really nice piece to put on their desktop using a diorama or use for gaming like we were just talking about so let's get started So I won't do an actual review of the kit since I've already done that in a previous video, but what I will do since this is brand new is I'm going to break down the sprues for you really quick. Starting off with the box art and then into the uh, just the the couple of sprues that are inside. Uh, this kit is actually holds kind of a special place in my heart because this, well the 35th scale I should say, the M4A3E8, was the very first uh, prototype kit that I ever received from Tamiya two and a half years ago. And we are quickly approaching our third anniversary on YouTube and that will be July 20th is our third anniversary. So very excited about that as well. Okay, we're going to start off with the uh, the lower hull, of course, to get that glued into position. Now, because this is a 40A scale kit, Tamiya likes to include extra weight inside. And you can see, we've got this piece, we'll put a little glue on it. And that just snaps right into place there. And then we'll put a bead of glue down in here too to give it a little extra support now like I was saying they like to put weight inside of here so you're gonna see these three or excuse me four grooves and they've given you these four steel weights that will have to super glue into place and that should give this vehicle a nice little amount of weight now once we get the uh, the other side molded on or glued on as well we can go ahead and glue on the transmission cover which you can see right there is just just perfect the way it fits in there. So I'm going to glue the weights in using super glue and we'll get the other side on. We'll move on to the next step. So here we are. Here is the, the sides on the hull as well as the transmission cover and a little bit of the tow hooks and things like that we've attached. We've also gone ahead and attached this line of uh, bolts that will attach the transmission cover. That was all one piece and it fit right into place. Now I've gone ahead and assembled some sub-assemblies here, including like the rear, that that will just slide right into place here. Put a little glue on it. And then once that gets glued into place, the vent for the back here will just slide right into a couple of designed little like just like that and I guess it oh yeah so it can it can slide into two different positions we're gonna leave it in this position right here and we'll let that set up for a minute and what I thought I would do now is just quickly show you the assembly of the uh, the bogies and how it goes together and as you can see it's mostly one big piece and we put a little glue on this piece. 
and the springs only go in one direction so you can't get them wrong you can see there's a hole on one side and a slot on the other so you always will get that right and then it's a, after you get that on it's just a matter of gluing or excuse me sanding all of the the road wheels which I've already started doing so you just pop the road wheels on and you're ready to go now I've gone ahead and assemble a couple of them and with that we'll show you how the one side goes together so we have all the return rollers up on top as well as the drive sprocket that has a poly cap inside so that'll slide in there we've got the uh, return roller for the or the uh, the idler wheel for the back and then we have the three sets of bogies, which I'm gonna put a little extra cement on this to really make sure these grab because they fit really well, but there's not a lot, a lot of uh, meat for it to grab onto. And you can see how that'll line up right there. I guess it'll stick a little bit better if I actually put glue on it for the, for the idler wheel. There is no poly cap inside of that. So, what I will do right now is I will go ahead and put the rest of the bogey wheels on, get them on both sides, and if you'll notice this one uh, wheel right here, that is not part of the spur or the sprue sticking out. That is actually that little piece actually helps you align the top of the tracks. So you want to leave that one in place. It'll keep the tracks laying perfectly around the top there. So I'll go and finish cleaning up the rest of the bogies and all the other uh, return rollers, and we'll get all the suspension built. Okay, we have the lower suspension all built up, ready to go, making sure everything all fits perfectly flat on the ground, which it does. And the next step calls out for us to start assembling the tracks. I'm going to hold off a little bit on that and build the, uh, the top part of the hull just to make sure that we might be able to work out a way to make them a little bit easier on the tracks. Now, as you can notice right here, this is the upper part of the hull and the sides are notched with the weld and those are going to get glued right into place here real nice tight fit and we also have the rear that'll get glued right back inside here and finally there is a piece of bracing that is going to go down the middle here that will keep everything nice and uh, square for the vehicle oh there that's how it goes I guess to try to get it in the slot would make it easier so that'll get glued right inside of there which I'll actually start gluing this up right now since we're on that portion of the build. And I will go ahead and get the sides glued on and then we'll start working on the next step. And we have that all assembled now and now we can go ahead and attach the fenders. And with the fenders comes the extra little piece inside that is going to block the side of the sponson so it will not be uh, have a light bleed go through when you look down through the top so these just line up just like this and hold that into place and you have your fin fenders on there and with both of the fenders in place just a matter of now to fit in the engine deck which fits right in there and this will fit right on top and we can mate together both the upper and lower part of the hull. Now, as you can see, there is not much of a gap between that for getting the tracks in there. So obviously I'm not going to glue it in place right now. I'm going to try to assemble the tracks and see if we can work them in without gluing the top and bottom together. But uh, we'll see how that works on there. It, ideally, it'd be nice to slide it down. But with that little peg that I talked about earlier, it might make it kind of difficult to kind of slide the tracks in there. So we might have to follow, actually follow the instructions, I should say, and put it in the way the instructions say by doing the tracks next. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to paint later on. But as you can see, it was that quick and easy to, uh, maybe I should glue that in first, but uh, that quick and easy to get the, basically the lower hull. And as you can see next to this little bottle of uh, cement, as my wife would say, that is a cute little tank right there. Okay, I've decided to uh, install the tracks after all before we attach the upper and uh, lower parts of the hull. And that is just because it's just going to make it a lot easier now that I look at everything to get it inside. So to put the tracks together, we've glued this one long length piece into place. And it makes it really nice that this drive sprocket can spin because you want to get it lined up just on the first tooth 
or the first hole, the tooth goes in the first hole on that piece. Then it's just a matter of lining them up and make sure you're putting them in the right position too. And just using a little bit of cement and it goes five individuals, this uh, four track piece, another individual, and then the long piece right here. And what we'll do is we'll glue all these together, put a couple of coats of liquid cement on them once we're pushed tight, let them set up for about about five minutes, just till they're, they're still soft but still hold together, and then we can wrap it around the front of the vehicle here. Now, I'll start doing that in a minute. I've also gone ahead and started putting on all of the little tiny grab handle or uh, tow hooks and light guards, things like that on the front, and as well as the bend back here. And you may have noticed too, when I placed this in place the, a while ago, I had it backwards. That gas cap goes towards the turret on it. So. What I am going to do now is I'm going to finish working on this piece of track and I'll come back just about the time this is all set up and we'll show you how they wrap around the, uh, the drive sprocket. Okay, it's been about five minutes now so we're going to put a little glue on this leading edge of this track as well as the teeth. We're going to take our piece of track that's been drying for a little while and get those first two edges to line up. Hopefully keep this all on camera so I don't move it around too much. And that should wrap right around just like it's supposed to. And we'll have to adjust it a little bit to make sure it lays flat. And then obviously glue it in place here as well. And you can see we will have our track. Now I will go ahead and work on the back piece of this as well. And we'll have a whole set of track and also do the other side as, uh, once we get this one done. Okay, I'm showing you this little portion right here because I think it's probably the most difficult portion of the entire build. Not that it's hard to put together, just really, really hard to cut off and hold properly. And I'm talking about all of these little supports that hold up the side of the fender. So uh, you're going to have to just work through it. It's not impossible. It's just so hard holding on to. I found, though, that if you get a pair of tweezers like these, and these are a new pair of my angle tweezers, but you can see they don't have a much of an opening on it. So you're not dealing with trying to put a ton of pressure on, and usually they go firing into the, uh, the carpet and never get found again. And also putting a little extra cement on there. It will change the coloration of the plastic like you see right here, but once you paint over it, it'll be completely gone. So don't worry about that. So that completes the, uh, the, the hull of the vehicle. Now it's just a matter of going ahead and uh, building up the turret. And first and foremost, there are some poly caps that are going to go onto these pieces. And with that, there'll be a little cap unit that'll go over it as well, which will glue that into place. And what I'm going to do is just basically really quick show you the, the way it's going out. The hull, the hull, it's the turret, excuse me. The turret of the vehicle is broken up into multiple pieces that you can also see that I've started attaching all the accessories to it just to make this go along a little bit quicker. So this is an unusual thing for Timmy to do on this scale. So you're gonna have to glue up the front and back, or excuse me, the back and the sides and making sure that you're gonna have the right amount of distance inside there. And that's where the, the top of the vehicle will come into play. And when you glue this on, that'll give you your general shape. You can see, now I haven't sanded any of these parts right back here, but but you can see that part of the back of the, uh, the turret is actually molded into the top. So I think overall it, it's gonna go, and you can see that it just, God, that fits perfectly right there. So I'll do a little sanding on all that, get all of this put together. And the only other thing is the, the barrel. And the barrel is two pieces up at the muzzle brake and then one long tube. But and part of the muzzle brake was on the tube already. So I just got done gluing that together and then we'll sand that to get rid of that little bit of a seam that goes in there. And then this should just plug right into the matlet, just like this. Once again, I just cut all these parts off, so we got a little bit more sanding to do. And I also assembled up the machine gun, the 50 cal. It too was pretty easy. It was only three parts to build it up. On. It's actually pretty decent looking considering the size of this. And, and it's just because 40 A scale is just so tiny, but this will just plug right in on the top too. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all these pieces together and then we'll fit it to the turret.
Here is our completed vehicle and completed in the sense that we have all the parts glued on here now except for the holes on the side here are for the extra tracks and there are a few other holes in the back here for the tools which we have all uh, ready to put on as well. Now I've gone ahead and painted the entire model black and that was for a couple reasons. A, I like to go over and then that way I can check to see if, um, if I have any little flaws here and there that I need to take care of. It's also good for a shadow coat and like here I noticed I've forgotten to put that one little part on and had to do a little sanding on the top of the, uh, the 50 cal. But you'll also notice too that all of the extra little glue marks that I had told you about to always put a little extra glue on these to make sure they stay in place and then you can do any cleanup while they're in place. All those glue marks are all gone now because all they do is discolor the plastic. They don't actually damage the plastic at all. Now overall, the kit was very, very simple to put together and this is a, a culmination of about about eight hours of actual build time and that's not I wasn't really rushing to do it so it's a good weekend kit for someone now there are lots of tiny little parts like the ones on the side here all of the light guards things like that the lights themselves were super super tiny but very well detailed so as long as you have a decent pair of tweezers uh, you shouldn't have any problem putting it together other than making sure do it far enough on the table so if a part falls off it stays on the table doesn't hit the carpet monster which you know what happens then they just kind of disappear into it now i'll also show you that i have not glued the top and bottom of the hull together and that is so i think it's going to just make it a lot easier to go ahead and paint the vehicle so we'll paint this separate while the olive drab that it normally would be and then i think with the airbrush we can get in there real tight and get around and airbrush some of the areas that need to be the olive drab trying to leave behind any of the the black for like the rubber pieces like that we might have to do a little touch up later on on because it is such a small vehicle so now with uh since we have it all built uh let's go ahead and start painting So we just got done painting the uh, entire vehicle with the uh, Tamiya's Olive Drab. And what I did was, when I, I was filming it, but didn't realize that they had magnified in, so I didn't get it. When it came to all of the wheels and all the suspension, I just got in super, super tight with my airbrush on a real fine setting and with a real low pressure. And we just painted around all of the black. Now there will be a slight amount of overspray on some of the rubber, but I'll show you in a little bit how we're gonna take care of that without having to go back and hand paint all of those road wheels. But we'll do that in a few minutes. Now I've sprayed the entire model with Tester's Dull Coat. And that is just to seal it in. And that is because we are going to go ahead and start putting some of the decals on. Now, there's only five decals on the entire vehicle. So it should be pretty quick, easy. Putting a little bit of Mark Fit down just to get it to uh, conform and stick really well. Uh, one thing I noticed, too, is I put the decals in water. And I've only ever noticed is just kind of recently that these Tamiya ones all kind of sizzle. They, they actually make a noise while they're uh, sitting in the water. And now we can go ahead, slide the decal on, make absolutely sure that it's straight. And then we can blot the rest of that off and then put just one other little tiny coat. Make sure we don't have any air bubbles underneath it. And the decals are super simple on this, just five stars. So 
We'll let that completely dry, get all the decals on, of course, and then we're going to spray it one more, or actually two more times, two light coats of Tester's Dull Coat to seal in the entire model. And remember, you want to use a Tester's Dull Coat and not the Tamiya, because the Tamiya can dissolve these decals pretty easily. So stay away from that when it comes to the decals. You can put one final coat of Tamiya's TS-80 dull coat over the whole thing because it is a beautiful dull coat but as long as you have a coat of testers underneath it it'll it'll protect those decals so I've jumped a little bit ahead here and I'll just go over kind of quickly what I've done obviously you can see I've gone ahead and put the tools on uh, I have to commend to me it too all of these little tiny tiny tools are all individual tools they're not molded into the piece they're separate so you can paint them and weather them and I'm pretty happy with the way those came out they kind of look like some worn tools and all I used for the wood color was we used XF60 dark yellow, let that dry, and then use Tamiya's brown panel liner to put a little coat over it to kind of dirty them up and give them, you can kind of see like a streaking effect, kind of like a wood grain on it. We've also attached the antenna on top. We put the, uh, the tow cable into place there. And the only other thing we have to do now, as I was going to show you about, was about doing any of the little touch up on the wheels. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, move the uh, the vehicle into a better position. What we're going to do is we're going to use some Tamiya's black panel liner. Let's see if I can get this in here. And you just want to touch it to the top. And it usually will wick right around the entire wheel in the front. And that will give us, get rid of any of the overspray we may have gotten. Yeah, there it goes, just like that. And just touching it to those and you might have to put a coat or two on it but that'll get rid of any of the overspray and this one I did a little while ago so you can hopefully see so I did not go back and hand paint any of the rubber we just airbrushed everything black did the insides the uh, olive drab and then just went over it with panel liner and I still might go over one more time just to touch up anything on it, but it's not having to do detail painting. It's more or less just touching it to one little area and letting the, the thin down paint just go all the way around it. And quickly, I'm not going to go too much into depth on weathering it because you guys have seen me weather Sherman's in the past, but I'll just kind of go over it quickly. What I'm laying down right here is a thin little coat of just clean enamel thinner. And then we are going to take some streaking grime. This is, a, this is an enamel wash. And we're just going to go ahead, put it across the top here, drag it down certain areas, kind of blend it in. Put it kind of thick around some of these edges here as well as in these there's a little groove on each one of these little little holders here as well and not letting it dry we don't want it to dry out at all we're going to take our clean brush and just start to work and blend this in so it's not too harsh in one area And it's just a matter of going back and forth over it, blending that brown streaking grime into the green paint, or the olive drab paint, I should say. And just working it. Just so we get kind of a dirty effect on it here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the vehicle, and we'll come back and do the next step. Now we're going to dirty up the tracks and I'm just using a little of Tamiya's brown enamel panel wash just to put down a wet wet coat of it and then we're just going to take a little bit of Vallejo's Light Sienna And we're just going to blot it into those tracks. And don't worry, if any of it gets on top there, we can just blow that off with a, another brush. And we're just going to go down all of the track to do this. And 
when it it looks different right now when it compared to when it dries it'll give it a nice dusty dirty effect so i'll finish up the tracks and then come back and show you what it looks like once it's dry And finally, all we're doing is taking a little dry light sienna and just going over some of these areas and kind of kind of putting a little bit of a dust coat on it. Real, real light, taking the majority of it off. But you'll start to notice that it starts to highlight things a little bit. And you just want to just keep going over it. And a lot of times just going in the pattern that is you'd think that the uh, stuff would be coming off. Not too hard around any of these little these little uh, guards and things like that. You don't want to knock any of them off, but you do want to get a nice little dusty, dirty effect going on. And we're doing that while the tracks are drying. So once the tracks are drying, we'll give them a good brush off, and we should be just about done. Well, here is our completed model. And I have to say, I'm very, very impressed with the uh, the quality that Tamiya has come up with for us on this. The, uh, the addition of the individual separate tools, plus all of the little parts, really make this look like a, a very, very nice looking model kit and not like a toy, like sometimes your, your smaller scale models can look like. This thing is really, really beautiful and will be a great addition to either wargaming, a small diorama, or even just a little, you know, desktop model because it is small enough that a guy could put it on a little piece of wood and keep it on his desk. It's just a beautiful, beautiful kit. Now, like I was saying, there are quite a few little tiny parts on that. So I have all the faith in the world that you guys can handle it. It's just be aware of that. You're going to have to be using a lot of tweezer work going into this. But I think the results are really, really worth it on this. The kit, everything fit exactly the way you would expect a Tamiya kit to, to fit. And from what I understand, this kit will be out in July in the United States and have a retail of about $36. So... Uh, that sums that one up, but just just a really really beautiful beautiful kit So I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming